What's the word, y'all? All right, I'm a level with you. Um, I will not be overreacting to the things I saw today. It was basically a ploy for me to get you to click the video. And I guess we can say mission accomplished because here you are. We just watched the Miami Heat take care of business against the Philadelphia 76ers. And then the Phoenix Suns shot like 100% from the field to beat the Dallas Mavericks. We will be talking about these things. We will be reacting to these things. But overreaction is a bit of a stretch because we all understand that this is a long seven game series. Leave a like, subscribe. I'm just a guy with a microphone. Uh, my opinion basically has no weight whatsoever, but I appreciate you listening. All right, I'm getting a lot better at putting down notes as I'm watching these games. So before the game started between Miami and Philadelphia, a lot of people were wondering uh, what the starter lineup was going to look like for the 76ers going into this one. And some people speculated that DeAndre Jordan was going to get the start. And uh, boy, were they right. Unfortunately for 76ers fans, man, DeAndre Jordan, and I've said this in the video before, has coasted his way over the last two seasons with basically being a nothing on the offensive or the defensive side of the ball. And what makes it even worse is that Okay, so he ended up playing 17 minutes in this game. And I think I saw something on Twitter that if you get rid of the DeAndre Jordan minutes completely, the 76ers win this game. I know it's easier said than done, or it's just a weird hypothetical if he don't play then, but it don't matter. But in these 17 minutes, I didn't see bro positively impact the game whatsoever. So you're like, all right, Kenny, that ain't that big of a deal. You know, game two gonna come up. Doc Rivers gonna make those adjustments. Doc Rivers went to his post-game interview and said, hey, we gonna keep playing DeAndre Jordan. Why? Oh, because you want a lob threat for James Harden? He threw one pass to DeAndre Jordan the entire game. Bro has been coasting along, and I was praying. Even when, when Joel Embiid announced he was not going to be traveling to Miami, I was thinking to myself, all right, ain't no way DeAndre Jordan's going to get real minutes. You know, you got B-Ball Paul who did get minutes in this one. You got Paul Millsap who basically ain't played in a long time, but both of those options will be better than DeAndre Jordan, and he still got the minutes, and it was a lot of them. <laughs> I cannot believe that the, the here go my here go my notes oh here go my notes doc rivers put out a small ball lineup in the second quarter and that team went on a nice little run so i was like okay you know i know eric spolster gonna make some adjustments at halftime i'm expecting doc to make the adjustments to have that lineup that went on that run to basically they took the lead in a game where they were the heavy underdog i think it was an eight point underdog uh they took the lead going into the halftime because this one lineup he, here's a tweet in the final five minutes of the first half the 76ers played tyrese max james harden danny green to buy is Harrison George Niang. That's their small ball lineup. They went on an eight to two run to take their first lead of the game. That lineup did not see the floor again. I, I don't understand how this is the lineup that got you back into this game because it was ugly for some time in that first half and they never played together again. The 76ers had a ton of mental lapses in that third quarter where the Miami Heat decided to, to basically wake up. Tyler Harrow had like three possessions in the third quarter where he ended up wide open on threes. And I think he had two of them wide open on threes was like afterwards the the entire 76 lineup looking at each other like how the hell did he get open but it happened again and again and again and and that was the thing those were the things that weren't happening very often in the first half that kind of kept them into this game and well James Harden one of the things we said in the preview without Joel Embiid being there and I know it's confirmed for sure now that he won't be there for game one and game two they're optimistic that he can get there for game three or game four but we were like man James Harden's gonna have to turn back the clock at least a little bit nope not the case and part of it of, of course is him um but the other part is like the Miami he defense we just saw them make Trey Young average like 15 points per game in a series Trey Young averaged 30 points in the regular season and then he got to a series against the Miami Heat and he averaged 15 on poor efficiency so yes James Harden was it the James Harden they expected or they needed to be but it was also the Miami Heat defense doing what they do best and that's just like completely taking out a star player I'm gonna get I give my MVPs for these games and listen yesterday's video or a couple days ago whenever we were talking about game one between Bucks and Bucks and Celtics I said my MVP was Brooke Lopez and one of the top comments was like Kenny the MVP is undoubtedly Giannis of course my boy but everybody gonna talk about Giannis it's the thing on this channel that's called the Kenny for all stars and these are the people that that aren't the superstar players because you know the superstar players for the most part are gonna have good great good games Giannis played amazingly he had a triple double he was dominant even though he didn't shoot the ball officially he had the most dominant performance for somebody that wasn't official from the field but everybody gonna talk about Giannis's performance so my MVP was Brooke Lopez and in this game of course Tyler Hero had a great game and Bam Adebayo had his best playoff game of this uh season so far my MVP was was P.J. Tucker yep P.J. Tucker hustle plays drawn charges like you would have thought he played with James Harden once upon a time 
Okay. Uh, because he, his defense on James Harden was great. See, like he knew the moves. He draw. He drew a couple charges. He got into the passing lanes. They basically smothered James Harden to the point where he had to pass out to these non-shooters, or I guess people that are normally shooters but became non-shooters, like George Niang, or I guess Danny Green. Um, the Miami Heat defense is just that elite, and I think that they can continue that same uh, mindset or that same game plan. We're gonna smother James Harden and, and see if anybody else can do anything. I thought the 76ers were best in this game when they were getting out and running I know they weren't they weren't necessarily fast break points but like off of make it was a couple possessions where they was just down court Tobias Harris oh my god have I gone this, this long without mentioning Tobias Harris beautiful game for Tobias Harris a wasted game because nobody else showed up but a beautiful game from Tobias Harris but again if I think that if they have a chance in the series or they want to have a chance in the series they need and I mean this honestly they need to take game two in Miami and they need James Harden to find a way. Because let's be honest with you. James Harden has been guarded a couple different ways in his career. We're talking about a former MVP. He's seen a lot of different coverages. So what the, what the Miami Heat are doing are, is great for sure. But James still needs to be James. He still needs to find a way to break it. And maybe breaking it is finding the shooters and they make the shots this time around. Or him turning back the clock. But I, I don't see a world, even with Joel Embiid coming back in game three or game four, where they're down 0-2 and they ended up winning the series. So... They need to make it happen, but it's going to be hard to happen because the Miami Heat are just that good. And it's a testament to great coaching, people understanding their role, and just great depth. Game one in the first round, Duncan Robinson hit eight threes. He got a DMP coach's decision today. Just wasn't the time that they needed him to shoot threes. Crazy depth, where even with Cal Lowry still being injured, and people were making jokes about his fit. I thought his fit was fire, especially when we got people going to the Met Gala. And I can't relate to none of the outfits. High fashion. Can't relate to none of that. I can relate to what Cal Lowry was wearing. You know, I swung a, I, I've swung a golf club before. It felt like he's playing golf out there. So shout out to the Heat. Taking care of business. Even though in that first half, it had me a little worried about what the heck they was doing. They fixed it. Uh, we got to talk about the Suns beating the Dallas Mavericks in the game where Luka had 45-12. And eight assists. Jeez, Luca, Luca, Luca. And in our pre uh, preview of this series, I was talking about all the different bodies that the Phoenix Suns could throw at them. It's going to be Mikhail. It's going to be um, a little bit of book. It's going to be Jay Crowder. It's going to be uh, Tory Craig. And I was right in that. They threw a bunch of bodies at him. None of that mattered whatsoever. <laughs> None of that mattered whatsoever. And it's just so cool to see Luca do these things. Obviously, they didn't win. But we are really witnessing like just a guy that will go down in history if he continues to stay healthy. It's, it's one of the greatest of all time we're seeing this how, how old is Luka Doncic? I'm gonna guess 24 he's 23 and he, he's a young 23 he just turned 23 Luka is this is the youngest player with 45 points and 10 rebounds in the playoff game since Kobe did it in 2000 2001 he's a young 23 and he just put out 45 on the number one team in the entire NBA unfortunately some of the people that he relied on heavily or, or the team needed to to perform did not Jalen Brunson struggled heavily and I think part of that had to do with the amount of length that the Phoenix Suns have we saw him destroy the Utah Jazz because the Jazz has Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell who are both like 6'1 guard they don't really have the length that the Suns had and the Suns threw a lot of length his way and he struggled his footwork was still crazy I think we can all agree that like when it comes to guards in the NBA, Jalen Brunson got some of the best footwork of anybody that's not like a super superstar. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to JB. But this was not his game. He has to find a way to evolve to the point where he can be impactful because that length is not going anywhere. You know, he needs to look at what he did in game two and try to find ways to use his quickness and, and, and score the ball more. Spencer Dinwiddie, who we said was the X factor for the series for the Dallas Mavericks, gave them literally nothing today. And it was a lot of, of Maxi Kleber. And a lot of Luka Doncic, but everything in between was a bit iffy. In my notes, I said the Mavs can hang? Question mark because in and um a time where I was ready to basically turn off the game and start filming this video, they went on a little run in that fourth quarter, and I was trying to figure out was this them turning it up and and showcasing what they could be, or was this the Suns like oh we good we could just dribble out the clock and take lazy shots and not really defend, just make sure we don't foul. I, and it might be a little bit of both. I don't really know, but the, but I I think that. They can hang for sure. Like I said, I have the Suns winning this series, but they think it, I think they can hang. Mindy Williams said something at the end of the third quarter in this um, interview that I just thought was like genius, but also so very simple. Um, and it, it just felt like he was, of course, he wouldn't do this because why the hell would he care about what the Utah Jazz did? But he was basically just saying the exact opposite of what the Utah Jazz did in their entire series. He was just basically saying that it starts at the point of attack. And if you can focus on the point of attack, that gets rid of all the other options on the wing as far as shooting goes. I mean, it was that. Um, I mean, I, and I guess the point of attack defense wasn't as great because, you know what, I, I, 
you know, I'm at the point now where I can still say somebody played great defense and got killed. Played great defense and got killed. Let, for, let me give you some of the examples. Hold on. Hopefully, hopefully these clips have gone live. Here's an example of like good defense, but Luka is just a dog. So it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes you just get those players. You'd be like, okay, we did what we could on this play. A pick, they do switch, and jo uh, JaVale McGee knows what's coming. He gets a little step back. You know what Luke about to do. That's a contest. That's a good contest, if you ask me. And, uh, well, he's Luka Doncic, you know? So <laughs> we had a couple plays like that in this game where the defense was good, but Luka was better. There's a lot of possessions where he made some of the greatest defenders, perimeter defenders in basketball look foolish. Like, Mikhail is a good defender. He's one of the better defenders in the league, but Luka just made him look foolish sometimes. You know, that's how good of a player he is. Next thing in my notes says Booker needed that rest. Next thing in my notes said Booker needed the rest. We were talking about game six versus the Pelicans, and Booker just did not look like the, uh, the best version of himself. Today he did, which is dope. Um, Aiden made them pay, which was a big thing coming into the series you remember my uh my preview where like it's a lot different than going against Rudy Gobert who don't it don't matter who's guarding him they won't pass on the ball they will force feed DeAndre Aiden and let him do his let him do his thing and he can bruise he can do the little mid-range jump shot he's got a big bag for a center you know and he made them pay today and a lot of the Dallas Mavericks's defense is predicated on forcing teams to take two pointers forcing teams to try to get to the basket or forcing teams to make mid-range jump shots and unfortunately for them um two of the best mid-range shooters in all of basketball play for the Suns so Chris Paul today ended up 7 for 13 from the field and the Devin Booker only shot 35 percent but still they have mid-range shooters on their team so I'm not saying that the Dallas Mavericks have to change their defense because it worked for them all season long and and you don't want to just change it right now on a whim after a game one but maybe adjust it slightly to prevent those guys from taking over the mid-range because those are the two dudes you do not want taking those shots also it's kind of hard to talk about games that aren't necessarily close like this game ended up being close seven point game but let's be honest man phoenix had this game the entire time you know dallas came out flat phoenix did not the crowd was rocking this is this is a really really good crowd of phoenix um so it's kind of hard to talk about games that are blowouts i just hope that for game number two philly shows up and and dallas plays a little bit better because me as a neutral basketball fan i like long series man i don't want to see nothing end in four because the nba is predictable when it comes to this playoffs but also if they're going to be predictable at least make it fun predictable you know if the higher seed is gonna win every single series at least make it a little dramatic give us a six give us a seven or something and uh yeah in anything can happen tomorrow we got game two of milwaukee versus dallas a game two okay all right all right i think they were talking about in the broadcast that thursday there's no games whatsoever which is weird to me so i don't know what the hell i'm uploading on thursday but there's no game so i don't know i guess there's some old tweets that we can react to content baby content is king